Well, greetings, people of the internet. Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today's episode is all about doing more with less. So yeah, doing more with less. Yeah, it makes sense, right? So you remember that 10th generation i5 processor I bought last year and I'm, that I've been very happy with? I think it's a 10400. And I put it into that 4U case uh, in my rack. Uh, it's a unit I run uh, my surveillance software, which is up here behind me. I run Plex on it and I run MB. It's a, uh, I think it's a three something gigahertz processor. It's got six cores, 12 threads. And I had the forethought to put about 32 gig of RAM in there. And then it's got an array of about four, three terabyte hard drives in there, or a mixture of four and three terabyte hard drives in there. So it's got plenty of storage. This is where I keep my library for Plex and MB. They share, the, share a library. Um, but even with Plex and MB and the surveillance software running, the CPU is only being utilized at about 23%. And then there's those Dell servers I have. I have a 620, I have a 720, and two R710s in the rack. And while the 710s are not as power efficient as the 720 and the 620, they still, you know, when you run them, they consume about 120, 150 watts of power. And that adds up, you know, how expensive power is becoming. So I purchased those Dell servers to do labs around them, to do, you know, dog and pony shows and show you how to set up labs and create a home lab and that kind of thing. And they're great for that. What I don't want is them being on 24 hours a day, seven days a week, sucking down the power. Unfortunately, I have a lot of virtual machines on that Dell R720. Now, as you know, I'm a big fan of Windows Server 2019 and Hyper-V, and that's what I'm running on those on that Dell. That also happens to be what I'm running on Prometheus, which is the i5-10400K. And I had the forethought to install Hyper-V on that server as well. So, Plex MB are running as native apps. The surveillance software is running as a native app. This is one of the benefits of running Windows on your servers, is that you can run all these Windows programs on top of having Hyper-V there to run virtual machines on. And so my thought was, why don't I consolidate all those virtual machines and put them onto Prometheus? And then I can turn the Dell R720 off when it's not in use, but have it available in the event that I need to do maintenance on Prometheus. It's a trivial thing to move virtual ma machines back and forth between Hyper-V. And I thought, oh, that's a great idea. One problem, that Dell R720 has a plethora of memory. I think it has 128 gig of RAM on it. The, um, the Prometheus server, yeah, it's got 32 gig of RAM. So I did some of the mathematical computations that you need to do, with, you know, the math, and discovered that, yeah, I was kind of short of RAM. But then I had another thought. You know, Hyper-V allows you to, on Windows machines, and I think it does on Linux as well, I have to research this and get back with you, but it allows you to do what's called dynamic RAM. In other words, you tell it, start up with this amount of RAM and you can use up to this amount of RAM. And since most of my Windows virtual machines are just sitting there idle, the, the VMs are, you know, they just do a specific task, I thought, well, maybe that, that'll allow me to get away with only having 32 gig of RAM on Prometheus. And sure enough, I was right. So what we're going to do today is talk about how I moved those machines over. We're going to go back to the computer here and I'm going to show you how I was able to do that. Now I've got a combination of Linux 
and Windows virtual machines running on here. So don't let people tell you Linux doesn't run well under high, oh, it runs great under Hyper-V and all the drivers are built in to the Linux uh, core of the operating system now. So um, so yeah, showing's better than telling. Let's go back to the computer and I'll show you exactly what it is I'm talking about. All right, so let's uh, talk about what we did. And what we did was we moved all those VMs, Linux and Windows machines, over from the Dell R720 over here to the uh, to Prometheus, the i5-10400. And um, as you can see, um, I, I've got a machine that's actually being put to good use. Now, I may end up bumping the RAM up on this. Now, right now the RAM is doing okay, but it's we're getting close to the limit on the RAM. But let me show you under Hyper-V here what I've done. So uh, it was an easy thing to do. Even if you have uh, uh, different processors, for example, the Dell R720 has a completely different processor than this uh, i5-10400. So if you go into the VM uh, under settings and go under processor, go to compatibility, you'll see that you can check uh, click this checkbox migrate to a physical computer with a different processor version will allow you to then move the machine between um, uh, equipment with a different processor i lost my train of thought there for some reason so that's one thing you can do with a hyper-v that makes it really handy now i'm not saying that this works between intel and amd but between intel processors i've never had a problem as you can see we've gotten all of these virtual machines moved over now my docker server is running on uh, debian linux and then i'm running docker and then running portainer to manage my docker instances i'm also running heimdale my nginx proxy on there the, all those good things so basically i've got it set up with uh, four gig of ram Four virtual processors. I could have probably gotten by with two, but I wanted a little bit more, a little bit more oomph. And as far as the hard drive goes, this is dry, this is running off of the P drive. Now I don't get a lot of disk activity on my uh, Docker server, uh, not a lot of I/O. So I elected to put that on to the P drive, which is basically my drive bender drive pool. So not it's spinning rust. It's not really fast, but it's not that slow either. So for a server that's, you know, hosting my website and doing my Portainer and my Heimdale and my Uptime Kuma, it's really not a bad fit. Okay. Now on, uh, I've also got my free PBX server, which is also Linux based. Now my management and monitoring server is a different story. So as you can see, it's not actually using a, a, an even amount of RAM like 2048. It's using 2066. Now what I did was, after I moved this machine over, I went into my RAM and I, re I remembered that you can enable something called dynamic memory on Windows, uh, on Hyper-V. And that's what I did. I told it you can, you, you can start up with uh, 4096. It can use up to that as well. But I told it minimum RAM is 512, maximum RAM is 4096. And then the memory buffer and the memory weight, I leave those alone. So by doing that, these Windows virtual machines will only use the amount of RAM that they need. So my Plus web server is a is a Windows server machine, and you can see it's, it's using dynamic RAM. Same way with my Domain Controller 2 and Domain Controller, controller 3. And even the same with my Windows 11 virtual machine. It's only using the amount of RAM it needs to run. And that RAM can change. Uh, in fact, if we come down here to memory, you'll see the startup memory, dynamic memory is enabled, minimum, maximum, assigned, and then the demand. And the beauty of Hyper-V is it manages all this for you without having to think about it. So now I've got everything moved over here to Prometheus. And Prometheus, while it's probably using 2 to 230 watts of power, maybe a little bit less, is still using less power than having it running and having the Dell R720 running, which pulls about 120 watts, 
24 hours a day, seven days a week. And the beauty of doing it this way is that I can move my virtual machines back over to the Dell if I need to do maintenance on Prometheus for whatever reason. So the other benefit of running Windows is that I can run Windows apps on Windows. I don't have to create a virtual machine to run my surveillance software. I don't have to create a VM to run my uh, Plex or MB. They're all running here. They're all getting along really well. As you can see, I've got Plex and MB running and my Drive Bender and my Blue Iris. Blue Iris is the real pig here. And it's constantly reading and writing to the hard drive, as you'll see if we... Uh, let's bring up Drive Bender real quick, just to give you an idea of its reading and writing to the hard drive. So it's constantly reading and writing. Um, but it's, you know, and so there's my IOPS and there's my read or write times as the as my cameras are writing data to the hard drives and then here's all the files it has open so yeah like i say it's handling the load well now for those vms that don't require fast storage i just have them use drive letter p which is my pool drive and for those that need fast storage this is a is it an nvme or an ssd let's find out yeah it's an inland uh nvme ssd so that's where my fast virtual machines uh, run from. And I may bump that up to 512 or, or 1 terabyte. I haven't decided that yet. We'll see as I need more virtual machines. But I do think that what I'm going to do is maybe bump that RAM up to 64 gig. And this, let me tell you, this uh, i5-10400 was money well spent in my opinion. And uh, it just, it's so... It just so handles the, the load so well. And you can see how long it's been up this time. Seven days, 16 hours, 15, 59 minutes. I think prior to the last reboot, it was up for 20 or 30 days. Um, I have the NVIDIA Quadro handling the the um, reading and writing of video from my cameras to the hard drive. So, And then I've reserved the Intel UHD for Plex and MB when I need it to transcode for subtitles and like i say it's handling the load very well now one of the things i didn't do is remember that when i moved my uh, l let me start from the beginning i have i'm running windows 11 as a virtual machine kind of in a sandbox environment and one of the things i forgot is when i moved this virtual machine was to place the hard drive the vhd on an ssd and not spinning rust and right now uh, i have spinning rust on this server i have it on the p drive and you'll see here hyper v virtual hard disk and here's my windows 11 uh, pro vm1 and it's a 30 gig image file so i do have a uh, an SSD or an NVMe drive on here, and that's my C drive. So I should have enough room to move that virtual hard drive over to this NVMe. My other option is I could, of course, store this on the Synology Flash Station using an iSCSI share, but uh, that's I'm, I'm not willing to set that up right now. So what I'm going to do is just create a a folder called Hyper-V and then what we'll do is we're gonna try and run the move command here under Hyper-V so we'll click on move next I just want to move its storage and I want to move all the virtual machines data to a single location and I'm going to choose the C drive Hyper-V uh, so it's going to be 27 gig. It needs to move next and finish. Now, the reason I'm doing this is uh, I booted this machine up, logged into it and tried to use it remotely. And it was just abysmally slow. Now, the other machines I have running in here, my Docker server, free PBX, Plesk, my domain controllers, and my management monitoring server, they really don't need really fast storage because they're just, you know, they're pretty much sitting there idle most of the time. Maybe running some monitoring applications or something like that. 
but they're not being used like a, a, a Windows 10 or a Windows 11 virtual machine would be being used. So I want really fast storage. So that's what this is going to accomplish. So we'll let this run and then we'll uh, we'll come back when it's finished and see how the performance of the virtual machine is. All right, so the move is complete and we can verify that by going into settings and checking the location of the hard drive. And there you go, it's moved it under Hyper-V on the C drive, Hyper-V, virtual hard drives, etc. So let's go ahead and we'll start the machine. So it's now started <clears throat> and we'll, uh, we'll give it a minute to uh, ramp up here and then we're gonna try and log into it remotely is let's go ahead and log on to that virtual machine and let's see if it's uh let's see if it's any faster oh yeah that's quite a bit faster uh, previously when i was booting off spinning rust i couldn't i it was taking forever for the taskbar to come up down here so so let's go into uh, Task Manager and see how it's doing. So, um, yeah, not bad, huh? So I've given it four CPUs, so now it sees the i5-10400 at 2.9 gigahertz. And as you can see, it'll increase and decrease the amount of RAM as needed. So let's go into a uh, browser here. <clears throat> let's just go to, uh, I don't know, let's pick a spot to go to. Let's see. Let's go to YouTube. Oh yeah, so speedy. Speedy browsing. Everything seems to be working well. And as you can see, it's increasing the amount of RAM as it needs it. So I would say, um, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So we now have our Windows 11 machine booting up uh, faster. Now keep in mind, we still got all this stuff running on Prometheus. Uh, and you can see it's handling the load really well. Don't forget this, you know, Prometheus is running Blue Iris, Dry Bender. It's running Plex. It's running, it's running MB. Um, and it's, uh, it seems to be handling the load very well. And I have two video cards here. So I've dedicated the Quadro 620 to, uh, encoding video for my Blue Iris. And I've left this one reserved uh, specifically for, for Plex and for the MB Media Center. And it's nice to see <clears throat> a CPU that's actually in use because by the time I retire this machine, I want the CPU to be all used up, if you know what I mean. So uh, we've got our Docker server now running. We've got free PBX running. We've got our Windows uh, management monitoring server running. We have Plesk running our web server. We have a couple of domain controllers and a Windows 11 Pro virtual machine all running on one server along with MB, Plex, and Blue Iris. And this gives you an idea, this just shows you the power of these new, uh, and keep in mind this, this CPU is two generations old, it's a 10th gen i5, but look what I can do with a $200 processor or a $160 processor. So I'm very impressed and, and I'm saving money at the same time. Um, I really don't care about saving electricity. It's the money that I want to save. So that's one of the reasons I've consolidated everything onto this one server. It's great having these enterprise level servers and the R720 and the 620 are pretty power efficient. But if I don't have to have them running 24 hours a day, there I don't need to have them running 24 hours a day and consuming money. Yeah, so there you go. I was able to consolidate all those machines and put them on one machine that is running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I mean, that 10400, kudos to you, Intel. That's a powerhouse uh, machine. Um, it's handling the load very well. I, I thought I might have start having problems with Plex or MB. 
it's been uh, it's been about a week now since I moved those machines over and and I'm not having any issues and I've still got machines running docker I've got a machine running portainer to manage those docker containers I've got my management monitoring server running Windows uh, and uh, land sweeper on there I've got uh, my Windows 11 virtual machine as you saw and because I had the forethought to install an SSD in there I have fast storage to run virtual machines that need you know fast storage like Windows 11 so yeah winner winner chicken dinner and be still as fast as ever Plex well you know it's Plex it's slower than molasses but uh, everything's working fine uh, my virtual machines are working fine I haven't had any problems or hiccups yeah and so now I don't have another server sitting there consuming 150 watts of power every day 24 hours a day seven days a week and I only need to spin those Dells up uh, for you know for lab work now some of you would argue that well you just spent money upgrading processors and RAM on that Dell R720 and what for not no 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 uh, it's for projects moving forward you know we'll build some big stuff out of there I just don't want them sitting there consuming power all the night and all the day so there you go we hope you found the video entertaining and informative as always please give us a thumbs up down below if you liked the video leave your comments down in the comments section subscribe if you're not already a subscriber and click that notification bell to be notified of new videos when they come out donate if you're so inclined paypal patreon youtube join function and you could also become a youtube premium member we get a little cut of that piece of pie as well so there you go thanks for coming to see us come back and see us again and don't forget we'll see all of you on the other side